Where exactly are Disney's villains getting their henchmen? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Disney henchmen who aren't truly evil. Nice work, good boys. <coughs> what, good, what, what, what boys? Steady boys. Da da da, da boys. Heel, heel. <coughs> for this list, we're looking at our favorite cronies who may not be as malicious as their bosses think, whether it's due to their negligence, incompetence, or sudden betrayal. Ryan. Rat. Number 10. The Huntsman – Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs I can't. I can't do it. You could say that The Huntsman was the original goon gone good for Disney. In Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the evil queen hires The Huntsman to assassinate the young princess. As Snow consoles a little bird, the Huntsman seizes the opportunity to carry out the evil deed. However, he has a change of heart at the last minute, dropping the knife and warning Snow about the Queen's wrath. She's mad, jealous of you. She'll stop at nothing. But, but who? He may not have held a strong presence throughout the movie, but his turnaround helped start the good-hearted henchman trope that led to some of our other entries. Run! Run away! Hide! In the woods! Anywhere! Never come back! Go. Number 9. Mirage – The Incredibles When introduced in Pixar's superhero flick, Mirage quickly proved to be one shady lady. I take it our host is… Oh, I'm sorry. He won't be dining with us tonight. He hopes you'll understand. Up until Syndrome's reveal, Mirage keeps Mr. Incredible's assignments vague or just straight-up fabricates intel. Sure, the Omnidroid just magically went rogue. However, her disdain for her employer grows when she begins seeing just how cruel he really is, eventually causing her to revolt and free Mr. Incredible behind Syndrome's back. There isn't much time. No, there isn't. In fact, there's no time at all. We may never know why Mirage chose to work for Syndrome in the first place, but at least she turned around to help bring him to justice. I called his bluff, sweetheart, that's all. I knew he wouldn't have it in him to actually... Next time you gamble? Bet your own life. Number 8. LeFou – Beauty and the Beast No one as Gaston, no one's quick as Gaston. While the animated LeFou is unwaveringly loyal to Gaston, the live-action Josh Gad version turns out to be quite different. Belle is the most beautiful girl in the village. That makes her the best. But she's so well-read, and you're so athletically inclined. In the 2017 remake, Gaston's bumbling right-hand man has developed a bit of a conscience. Although he still parades his mentor around like the perfect person, his adoration only lasts until the final battle. When Gaston abandons LeFou, LeFou switches sides and helps fight off the villagers. Not handled! Well, I used to be on Gaston's side, but we are so in a bad place right now. You're too good for him anyway. Yeah. This turn gave us a nice redemption arc for the character, hammering home the lesson that arrogance should never be championed. Number 7. Sir Hiss – Robin Hood A perfect fitzire. Most becoming. You look regal, dignified, sincere, masterful, noble, chivalrous. Don't, 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 don't overdo it, yes. If LeFou was the spit and polish on Gaston's boots, then Sir Hiss was the overly optimistic yes man for Prince John. Throughout the movie, Sir Hiss displays his admiration for the prince, complimenting him on even his most malicious deeds and praising his master's supposed brilliance. Oh, oh yes indeed, sire. Your plan to catch a Robin Hood in public is sheer genius. However, we weren't expecting such shock on his face when Prince John suggests murdering Friar Tuck to capture Robin Hood. So much for that brilliance, huh? Friar Tuck will be led to the gallows in the village square, don't you see? Sire, hang Friar Tuck, a man of the church. This moment showed that even someone as deceptive as Sir Hiss can have their limits. So the guy can't be entirely evil, right? Number 6. Nathaniel, Enchanted My most adored queen, where did you send her? To a place where there are no happily ever afters. Okay, we can't really blame Nathaniel for being on Queen Nerissa's side. After all, he was only loyal to her out of infatuation with her beauty. 
Sure, wrong to follow someone for that reason, but thankfully he realized the folly of his ways before it was too late. We can't risk my stepson bringing the girl back. He shan't, your majesty. I swear it. No, he shan't. I intend to make absolutely certain of that. But your majesty, how exactly did you ever end up tasting so mm, mm, delicious. <laughs> After failing yet another attempt to poison Giselle and suffering through another one of Nerissa's tantrums, Nathaniel realizes that he's been used for Her Highness's own personal gain. To try and fix things, Nathaniel finds Prince Edward and reveals Nerissa's plot. Remember kids, not everything that glitters is gold. Back up and get ready for the main event! Evil. Number 5. Shen Zi Banzai and Ed, The Lion King. I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> Whereas most henchmen on this list were in it to please their masters, the hyenas had more of a temporary alliance with Scar. Yes, they were vicious and would go so far as to threaten a couple of kids. But hey, hyenas gotta eat, you know. If you ever come near my son again. Oh, this is this is your son. Oh, yours. <laughs> Did you know that? No. Scar would learn this the hard way when he attempted to take over Pride Rock. After the hyenas realize Scar isn't capable of overtaking the throne and giving them a home away from the graveyard, they decide to finish him off and eat him. Oh, my friends. Friends? I thought he said we were the enemy. A grisly act of revenge, yes, but considering how quickly they turned on their master, they may not be inherently evil. Just feral and maniacal. Yeah, that's it. Number 4. Iago, Aladdin Franchise Ahem. Out in the menagerie, hurry! <gasps> I'm coming! <laughs> <laughs> you got a problem, Pinky! In hindsight, Iago might be the opposite of a good henchman. Typically, a cunning crony would follow every word of their master without question and conjure up devious ways to carry out their orders. Iago certainly has some mischievous tricks up his sleeves, er, feathers, but when it comes to obeying Jafar, it's a flip of the coin. Most of the time, he's either complaining or bickering with the sorcerer. Oh boy, he's cracked, he's gone nuts. Jafar, Jafar, get a grip! Good grip. If we had to guess, the bird may hold some resentment towards Jafar. Come on, how many goons would be celebrating their freedom as much as Iago did in the beginning of the return of Jafar? I'm through with that! I'm flapping free from here on in! I'm looking out for me! Number 3. Wiggins, Pocahontas. Look at it, Wiggins. An entire new world chock full of gold. Just waiting for me. And scores of adventures waiting for us, right, Percy? Who could forget Ratcliffe's clueless, idiotic manservant? When compared to the pompous, self-righteous governor, Wiggins is a kind-hearted dolt. Take the scene where the two converse about the new land, for example. While Ratcliffe rants about how King James will shower him with honor and glory, Wiggins is eager to venture across new territory and possibly greet the Native Americans with gift baskets. Do you think we'll meet some savages? If we do, we shall be sure to give them a proper English greeting. Oh, gift baskets! Clearly, he isn't as hostile and imposing as Ratcliffe. And he'd much rather make friends with everyone rather than bully his way through life. And can you believe these two were voiced by the same person? Stirring oration, sir. I'm sure the men were most exhilarated. <laughs> Let us hope so. I'll need those witless peasants to dig up my gold. Number two, Megara, Hercules. Are, aren't you a damsel in distress? I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle this. Have a nice day. Most of our entries have either been hired as henchmen or have been with their master since the very beginning. Megara, on the other hand, is a special case. Being forced to serve Hades after selling her soul to save her now ex-boyfriend's life. Speak of the devil. Meg, my little flower, my little bird, my little nut, Meg. From the beginning, we see that Meg regrets her situation and wants no part in Hades' plans. Luckily, she gets her shot at redemption when she saves Hercules from being crushed beneath a column. Her sacrifice breaks Herc and Hades' deal. Hercules, look out! 
People always do crazy things when they're in love, but what she did was downright heroic. Okay, go Meg for having a real arc in Hercules. He might be a zero to hero, but I think she's a real slice. Before we get to our biggest goody two-shoes of an evil henchman, here are a few honorable mentions. Shame on you, upsetting the poor captain. There'll be no end outs to die. She now, she. Go on, go on, off it. Off with you, I say. Go away, go away, go away, out of here. Hades is gonna kill us when he finds out what happened. You mean, if he finds out. Of course he's gonna If. If is good. Sweet Nightingale, sing Sweet Nightingale. High above me. You know something? You're making a lot of sense. I mean, why take the risk? You should tell Hopper. Good idea. But, you know, it's really not our place. I mean, you're his brother. That makes you like uh, the vice president of the gang. Wow, it kind of does, doesn't it? Push him in, all of them. <gasps> this is what happens when you dummies try to think. We're all just trash, waiting to be thrown away. That's all a toy is. <laughs> hey, stop it! Put me down, you idiot! <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kronk, the Emperor's New Groove And let's not forget Yzma's right-hand man. Every decade or so, she gets a new one. This year's model is called Kronk. Let's be honest, we all saw this coming. As if the Emperor's New Groove weren't quotable enough, Kronk's bumbling and dim-witted demeanor has made him one of the best henchmen to ever appear in a Disney flick. Oh, right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison. If he wasn't screwing up Yzma's plans, he was constantly finding himself in moral conflicts. He treats everyone with the same respect, displays a helpful attitude, even when it's at his inconvenience, and saves Cusco not once, but twice. Now, now, remember, guys, from above, the wicked shall receive their just reward. That'll work. How in the world could someone like Kronk be an evil henchman? Actually, we should be asking why Yzma hired him in the first place. Yeah, tell me about it. No, no, it's not you. She's not the easiest person to get close to. There's a wall there. Trust me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.